In this video we're going to go over some of the basic trigonometric identities and we'll be using these when we start manipulating trig functions algebraically. We'll first review our basic trig functions and we'll also go over our reciprocal identities. Then we'll talk about ratio identities, that's putting tangent and cotangent in terms of sine and cosine. We'll do Pythagorean identities and lastly we'll talk about the even and odd identities. First of all, what is an identity? Well, an identity is an equation that's true regardless of whatever values we substitute for our variables. So we can use these identities without worrying about if they're valid for all cases. Let's remind ourselves what our general right triangle looked like. If I gave you an angle x for a right triangle, again we can tell this is a right triangle because of the square in the corner, we can talk about the sides in terms of opposite, adjacent and hypotenuse according to this angle x. And we also talked about our six trigonometric ratios. Sine of x is opposite over hypotenuse, cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse, and tangent is opposite over adjacent. Likewise cosecant of x is equal to hypotenuse over opposite, secant was hypotenuse over adjacent, and cotangent was adjacent over opposite. So we talked about the relationship between sine and cosecant and cosine and secant and tangent and cotangent as reciprocals. Well now we're going to call these our reciprocal identities. For whatever value I have for x, sine x is equal to 1 divided by cosecant of x. No matter what my value for x is, cosine of x is always equal to 1 over secant of x. And tangent of x is always equal to 1 over cotangent of x. And in the same fashion, cosecant of x is equal to 1 over sine x, secant of x is equal to 1 over cosine of x, and cotangent of x is equal to 1 over tangent of x. Well, if we look at tangent x again, that's the opposite over adjacent, we're going to build something called a ratio identity. What happens if I divide the numerator and denominator by the hypotenuse? Then I would have tangent of x is equal to opposite over hypotenuse divided by adjacent over hypotenuse. Why would I want to do that? Well, if we remember, sine of x was equal to the opposite over hypotenuse, and the cosine was equal to the adjacent over the hypotenuse. So that means our tangent of x equals sine x over cosine x. And we'll be using this a lot when we're trying to manipulate our trigonometric functions algebraically because if we're trying to simplify, we might find it easier to turn our tangents into sine and cosine. Likewise, I can do the same thing with cotangent. Cotangent is equal to cosine x over sine x. Let's go back to Pythagorean's theorem. a squared plus b squared is c squared. Well, if instead of a, b, and c, I looked at these in terms of opposite, adjacent, and a hypotenuse, then I can say the opposite side squared plus the adjacent side squared is equal to the hypotenuse squared. Well, now let's say I divided both sides by hypotenuse squared. Why do I want to do this? Well, let's see what happens when I pull out that squared. I have opposite over hypotenuse all squared, adjacent over hypotenuse all squared, and hypotenuse divided by hypotenuse all squared. Well, again, the opposite over hypotenuse is just sine, the adjacent over hypotenuse is just cosine, and anything divided by itself is equal to 1. Notice I have sine x all squared plus cosine x all squared, but the way we'll write this is like this, sine squared x, cosine squared x. That means take sine x and square the whole thing. Well, what happens if I take this, this identity and then divide both sides again, this time not by the hypotenuse squared, but what happens if I divide it by sine squared x? Then I have sine squared x divided by itself, plus cosine squared divided by sine squared, and that all equals 1 over sine squared x. Well, I can rewrite this as 1 plus, let's see, cosine over sine, we just talked about that, that's equal to cotangent, and that's all squared. And then I have 1 over sine squared x, which again is a reciprocal function, and that's equal to cosecant squared x. I could also, in instead of dividing both sides by sine squared x, I could divide both sides by cosine squared x. And then that leaves me with tangent squared x plus 1 is equal to secant squared x. So these are our three 
Pythagorean identity. The only one I memorize is sine squared x plus cosine squared x equals 1, and then I take 30, 45 seconds and derive the other two from that, again, just by dividing by sine squared or dividing by cosine squared. Again, we'll need to know all three of these when we start dealing with our algebraic expressions and equations. Finally, we need to talk about our even and odd identity. Remember when we were taking our angles and putting them in standard position? Well, a positive rotation went counterclockwise, and if I take that same angle, but rotate it in a clockwise direction, then that's the same angle, but it's a negative angle. Well, what is sine of negative x? Well, if we remember, sine is always negative in quadrant 4. So that means the sine of negative x equals negative sine of x. Cosine of negative x, however, is a little bit different, because we remember that in quadrant 4, cosine is positive. So the cosine of negative x actually equals positive cosine of x. Lastly, let's look at tangent. Tangent of negative x is equal to, well, let's see, in quadrant 4, tangent's negative. So that means, like sine, the tangent of negative x is equal to negative tangent of x. And here I have all even odd identities. Cosecant, secant, and cotangent follow their reciprocal functions, sine, cosine, and tangent. Well, I haven't really talked about why on earth we call this even and odd identities. Well, this really has to do with if we look at these functions graphically. An odd function is a function whose graph is symmetric over the origin, whereas an even function, that graph is symmetric over the whole y-axis. And if we start off by looking at sine of x, we see that if we take a point here, it's actually symmetric over the origin and appears there. So that means sine x is an odd function. So the sine of negative x equals negative sine x. Tangent works exactly the same way. If I take a point here, it's translated over the origin here. So again, tangent of negative x is equal to negative tangent x. But cosine is a little bit different. This is an even function. It's actually symmetric over the y-axis. If I take a point here, it's translated over that y-axis here. So cosine is an even function. So cosine of negative x equals cosine of x. And here's a summary of all the trig identities I've talked about. You need to memorize all these and be able to use them when you're doing the homework section for algebraic manipulations. Again, I would take a few minutes and sketch these out at the beginning of an exam, so I have them for easy reference. And there we've gone over our basic trigonometric identities. Reciprocal identities, ratio identities, Pythagorean identities, and lastly, even and odd identities.